I'm going to show you how to quantize large language models using GGUF or AWQ. If you're not familiar with quantization, it's what allows us to fit large language models onto smaller devices or smaller GPUs. I'll take you through the various methods available and the state-of-the-art ones that give you top performance. Then I'll go right through an example for AWQ and another one for GGUF, which is used for laptops like a Mac M1 or even for Windows. Let's start things off with a little presentation on how to quantize an LLM with GGUF for AWQ. So first, why quantize? Well, most of you watching probably know, but quantization allows you to fit a model in a smaller GPU. For example, loading LAMA 70B would normally take two or maybe three A100 uh, GPUs with 80 gigabytes of VRAM, but you can run LAMA 70B on an A6000 48 gigabytes of VRAM if you quantize, or you could run on one A100. Also, you can run a quantization LAMA 7B on a Mac M1. In fact, on a very powerful Mac, you can probably even run LAMA 70B on a Mac M2 if you use GGUF, whereas normally even running 7B would take maybe an A140 gigabytes. So you can run on much smaller devices, which obviously will save money and also uh, makes it just more accessible for smaller companies and individuals who are running testing. What is quantization? Really brief. There's another video you can check out on AWQ where I describe more and an earlier video again you can check out uh, from Trellis Research. But the basic thing is that models are trained with 32 bits representing each number or 16 bits. And that's a lot of bits and that full precision may not be needed after training. So quantization simplifies down the model. It basically approximates 32 bit or 16 bit numbers by a four bit representation. And that obviously saves a lot of storage space so you can fit the model onto your GPU with a lot less total bytes. Typically, the models are thought of in 16-bit format. So if you quantize to 4 bits, you can think of it as a 4x reduction. Roughly, maybe you only get 3x, but something like that in terms of reduction of the size of VRAM that you need. So which quantization should you use? Well, I would... Um, there's probably a lot more nuance, but I'm trying to simplify this down for the video. And I'd say for a laptop, you want to use GGUF. If you're using a Mac, it runs really well with GGUF, which is formerly called GGML, and that's supported by the LAMA CPP repository. If you're running in any other way, then I would recommend using AWQ, which is Activation Aware Quantization. It's a uh, one of the latest quantizations, and it tends to have advantages over GPTQ, which I would have recommended a month ago because that was probably the best option at the time. Now, lastly, for fine tuning, I probably recommend using bits and bytes and using the NF4 data type. That's typically what I use for quantization. I would love to move to AWQ for doing uh, fine, choosing, fine tuning, but it doesn't have LoRa support available yet, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So overall, I'd say if you're running on a laptop, use GGUF, and if you're running on GPU, use AWQ. Now I'm going to give you an overview of these four types of quantization. Uh, the two we'll be focused on today are AWQ and GGUF. Those are the ones that I'll go through in detail, but it's good to understand how they all compare. The first thing to think about is data dependence, which is the question of whether you need a data set in order for quantization. If you do use a data set to quantize, it helps you to identify which activations or which weights in the matrix are important and which ones to prioritize for quality. However, if you do need a data set, then your results are only going to be predictably good for similar data sets. So if you quantize with data set A, you may have poor performance with data set B. So there are pros and cons with using a data set. AWQ and GPTQ both rely on data sets, GGUF and bits and bytes do not. Now GPTQ is kind of extra dependent on a data set because not only um, does the data set influence which weights to protect as in AWQ, but GPTQ further calculates the loss associated with quantization and reweights. And so that reweighting, which is kind of a second order effect is also data dependent for GPTQ which probably makes GPTQ even less robust if you use a data set that's not like what was used for quantization. The second topic, which is related to data dependence, is on the fly. Can you 
just quantize on the fly. In other words, take a full precision model and only quantize it when you're doing inference. And with Bits and Bytes NF4, this is possible. There are packages like text generation inference. If you look at any of my videos on API or server setup, I use text generation inference and it will take a full model and it will on the fly when you load it quantize. So you don't need to actively quantize the model in advance, which is very nice. Of course, this is harder with AWQ and GPTQ because they are data set dependent, which means that you would have to choose a data set, go through the quantization. Um, so it's harder to do it on the fly. With GGUF, it's possible in principle to quantize on the fly and uh, take a model, quantize it and load it into your computer. But I think it's less common. It's not that it's possible, but I haven't seen it done too often. It's common to first quantize the GGUF model and download it and then run inference. Um, next up here, we have speed. And speed is, I would say, probably fast on GGUF and AWQ and slower on bits and bytes and GPTQ. GPTQ is not really all that much slower than AWQ, but if you want to get good quality, you need to use a quantization of GPTQ that has act order turned on. Act order means activation order, and it means doing the quantization according to the order of the size of the activities. And what that does is it protects the more important activi activi activations, rather, not activities. And if you don't run with act order um, turned on when you're quantizing with GPTQ, you will uh, hamper the results in quite a lot of cases. So basically, if you run GPTQ with good quality, you are going to see a significant slowdown because when you have that act order turned on, it requires ordering in the list during inference, and that tends to slow it down. The next thing is lower fine tuning. Can you lower fine tune in quantized form? And the most straightforward to, to do fine tuning in is bits and bytes. It's possible to do LoRa. It's also possible with GPTQ. It is possible with GGUF. There's um, there's now the possibility, although I'd say it's probably less straightforward because it's less common. So there are less scripts available that are doing that. AWQ does not yet have LoRa fine tuning. It would be really nice to have that though. The next question is whether you can merge adapters. When you do a LoRa fine tune, you have an adapter and you have the frozen base model. And it would be nice to combine both of those. It's convenient because people then only have to download one model, but also it saves you an addition operation on the GPU. So it's nice if you can merge. Unfortunately, it's not very straightforward to merge in any approach really. I'm not aware in GGUF, there may actually be a way to merge here. I'd need to read more through the LoRa fine tuning part of the repo. In bits and bytes, you can merge to the unquantized base model, which is not bad. It affects the accuracy a little bit because ideally you would merge onto a dequantized base model. Now that's kind of getting technical. In AWQ and GPTQ, um, I'm not aware of ways of merging the models, unfortunately. Next off, we have whether you can save the model in quantized form. And I think this has been the big benefit of GGUF and also GPTQ and AWQ. It's easy to save the model and then put it onto Hugging Face in a format that um, can easily be uploaded and downloaded. This isn't possible with bits and bytes at the moment. Um, there have been pull requests open for quite a while. But what that means is if you want to save your model to Hugging Face with bits and bytes quantization, you have to merge it back to a base model and then push the full base model and then allow people to run inference on the fly on that model. So overall, the reason why I'm going to focus here on GGUF and AWQ is that GGUF is built in a C library. It's um, a fairly fundamental library that doesn't have a lot of abstraction to it. So it's quite efficient in running, particularly on Macs. And it's used very widely for doing inference on, on laptops. My choice of AWQ over GPTQ is because AWQ is faster when you have actor order turned on on GPTQ. So basically for um, similar performance results or sometimes better in some cases, if you're working on a data set that's not the same as the quantization data set, um, you'll get slightly better performance on AWQ and generally better speed than GPTQ. Uh, bits, for bits and bytes NF4, you can take a look at any of my fine tuning videos 
The reason I'm not going to show that quantization is because it's possible to do it on the fly. So there's no need to prepare these models in advance in a quantized format. I'll now show you how we'll do the quantization uh, for AWQ. I'm going to use RunPod because I want to have a GPU that's going to be compatible with AWQ, which relies on the more modern GPUs, i.e. not a T4 like a free collab environment. So I'll log into RunPod and I'm going to go to Secure Cloud, select an A6000. And it's important when I deploy that, make sure to give yourself enough space. This is way too much space for running the model we're going to run because it's going to be small, but you don't want to have insufficient space and then you're running the notebook and it's not big enough in size and then you have to go back and resize it. The model we're going to run for AWQ is Tiny Llama. Um, in fact, the model we're going to run is Tiny Llama. It's a small version of Llama that's been trained. This is the 1 trillion checkpoint. It's going to be trained for 3 uh, trillion tokens. You should check out the video on Tiny Llama if you want to learn more. But this model here is a publicly available model. It's not gated and it's what we're going to train today. RunPod is just about loaded here. And so once it started up, I'm going to connect and go into the Jupyter Notebook. The pod is now just loaded and we will have the option to connect to Jupyter Lab. And once I'm connected, I'm going to upload the notebook that I have for quantizing with AWQ. I've just uploaded the AWQ notebook and we're ready to get started. The first thing I'll do is install auto AWQ. After that, I'll be installing transformers. It's being installed from source, which means it's the development version that's actually required right now. It may have changed if you're watching this video quite some time after release. You could just do pip install transformers, but right now we need the latest development version for that to work correctly. After that, we're going to log into Hugging Face. This is necessary because we're going to push a model up to Hugging Face Hub in quantized form. Uh, so I'm going to want to run that cell and log in, which means I'll have to put in my credentials. In fact, that's um, something that you might decide you want to do um, before running the installation, but either way, it's fine. After that, we're going to install, we're going to import and load the model that's of interest, which is the tiny llama model. You can see the model name is there. The model and the tokenizer will be loaded and then quantization will start. This is auto AWQ that's looking after the quantization. Note that I have chosen safe tensors equals true. I highly recommend using the safe tensors format. It's much quicker to download. So you'll see that your downloads of the model will be a lot quicker. Um, your uploads are probably quicker too, but it's better than using uh, PyTorch, the basic model type. Also better for security because safe tensors doesn't allow people to inject code. So it's you can download safe tensors models knowing that they're less vulnerable. Okay. So up here, we have completed the install, and now I'm going to put in one of my Hugging Face tokens. I've authenticated, and that's done. Next up, we'll start to load the model. It's probably going to be quite quick because it's only a 1 billion model size. Yeah, you can see um, the model is 4 gigabytes in size in the 16, in float 16 format. After quantization, it's going to be less than 1 gigabyte in size. Once that's done, uh, well, once the model is loaded, we still have to go through quantization. We'll see a progress bar for that momentarily. And when that's complete, we will have the opportunity to upload files to Hugging Face. Now, for this to work, we need to ha first have created a repository on Hugging Face. Um, I'm going to create a repository called uh, Tiny Llama in Trellis. I've actually already created this, so I can just show you right here. My standard is to name it with dash AWQ at the end. All right. So you can see that data is being downloaded. AWQ requires data to quantize. The data is used to decide which activations are relevant. And then the quantization protects those activations in the matrices. Um, of course, activations are a product of 
the matrix itself in the language model times the input. So that's why you need some data to provide input so the uh, activations can be calculated. Here you can see that quantization is underway. It's currently at 5%. I should increase the size of my screen here. So quantization is at 5%. It's moving forward in 22 steps. That's because there's 22 layers in the tiny llama model, I believe. And once that's done, we'll be ready to push the model to Hugging Face and then to upload the configuration and tokenizer files. And after all of that is done, we're going to try and run the model in quantized form. So for that, I'm going to copy in the repo that I've just created. And once that's done, we'll be able to run that inference and see what the output is to the question of what planets are in our solar system. Let's take a look up here to see how the quantization is going. We're at 27%. So one thing I can show you in the meantime is, uh, as a good practice, I suppose, it's worthwhile creating a model card. So here is the base model. And I'm going to just edit the model card of the base model. Of course, I don't have permissions to do this, uh, like to commit the edits, but I can just copy them. I'll create a model card and I'll paste in the model card here. Now, above this, I'm going to say AWQ version of Tiny Llama at 1 trillion tokens. And I'll just say original model card follows low and um, that should be pretty much it I can add some tags like this AWQ maybe tiny llama and then I'll be able to just do one card commit well obviously it's a commit so I'll just say model card Okay, so we now have a model card, and once we have pushed all the files, we're going to see the files appearing here under files. First, we have to allow the quantization to complete, which it is nearly done. It's just going to take a second here. Quantization is now complete, and the model files are being pushed. Again, it's a fairly small file, and that's why it's not going to take long to push up to hub. It's just about 766 megabytes in size, so nicely under a gigabyte. So the model has been pushed, and now we will push all the other files, which are almost instantaneously pushed. If I go back to the repo here, I should see all the files appearing, which they have, and the model is in safe tensors format, which is what we want. Now we're running in reverse, and we're actually downloading the files, and then we're going to try and run an inference. All of the files have been downloaded. It was very quick because we're downloading safe tensors and the layers are being replaced with the quantized versions. And next we are going to run a prompt. And here's the prompt. It's actually really good. This is just the 1 billion model. And I've asked what are the planets in the solar system? And it's getting the eight planets, which is really nice. And, um, I wouldn't worry about this last part. It's because I probably haven't correctly set the tokenizer um, to recognize that this is the end token that is being used. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is this is pretty amazing in terms of quality. So that's a quick overview of AWQ, folks. Next up, we're going to quantize using GGUF, which will provide models for laptops like Macs. It also works well on GPUs, although it's probably not quite as optimized as something like AWQ in terms of performance. So I'm going to upload the script for GGUF quantization. We're right here in the script and GGUF used to be called GGML. So I'm going to update that right here. And now we'll go ahead with our GGUF quantization, we'll do it on the exact same model, the 1B model, and we will again log into Hugging Face so that we can push to hub. So I'll put in my token here, and there we go. Now, if you can also run this in Google Collab. You can actually run it in a free collab notebook if you're quantizing a 7B model, and you can use a pro notebook with high RAM for 13B and then 
for a larger model, it's hard. Even with the A100 from Collab, it's only 40 gigabytes of VRAM. So you probably need to come over to RunPod or some similar service. Um, so we're not going to use Google Drive and we're not going to set the cache directory for Google Drive. We'll just set the cache directory to the root directory, which is the storage on RunPod. This uh, code here is sometimes needed for making sure commands run in Google Collab, but I won't need that right now. So next up, I'm going to install some of the libraries needed to uh, run GGUF. Now, GGUF, the quantization is done by Llama CPP. So effectively, we're going to install Llama CPP. We're going to install some of the tokenizers as well. And then we're going to be able to start quantization. So here, I'm just importing everything that I need. And next up, I'm just going to set the model name that we want, which is um, going to be this model here. Here's the model that we want. So I'll copy that and put it in as the model name. And we're going to load it. Um, you can load it to CPU or GPU. It, it shouldn't really matter too much. I'll just set that to auto and we can start downloading the model. And I actually made a mistake there. I need to set the model name before I run it. So let's try that again. All right, so now it's downloading the model, four gigabytes as we expected. Once the model is downloaded, then we're going to clone Llama CPP, which is what does the quantization. And when that's cloned, we will CD into that directory and save the model into the directory. Uh, so that should all be done now. Llama CCP, rather CPP is cloned and you can see there's a models folder and it has the PyTorch model within it that has just been downloaded. Now, there's one more thing we need to do, which is to get the tokenizer uh, information that's required for the quantization. And so I've just run that cell and now all of the tokenizer information that's required has been copied in here. So we can move on now to compiling Llama CPP. And then we're going to make using OpenBLAS which is a linear algebra library. So we'll go on to make that. And once we're done, we don't really need to list these files. We need to install any other requirements for Llama CPP. And then finally, we can start to move to the quantization. The first step is converting to float uh, 60, to a 16-bit format. And once that's done, we're going to then convert the float 16 model into a four bit model, which is uh, the Q4 underscore K here. So we'll be ready to just run that cell. Now I've already got tokenizer installed, so that's fine. And finally, once all of that's done, we're going to push the model to hugging face. And that can be done just by running uh, first a repo creation. So I'll go back up towards the top of the script. I'm going to copy this name here and go over to Hoing Face. Then I'll create a new model. I'll create it under Trellis and put on GGUF at the end. And then I'll create that model. I will uh, just duplicate this here and create a model card. I'm going to again take the same model card. Actually, you know, I can kind of take a shortcut here by going to Trellis and getting the model card we've already created here, which is AWQ model card. Paste that in. Of course, it's not AWQ, it's now GGUF. So we can just that in like this and commit the model card like this here and now that that's done hopefully we're getting close to quantization this is all the installation script here for Llama CPP you can see here now we're currently converting it into BF16 which is brain float it's a 16-bit format and once all of that is done 
we'd be able to quantize uh, to four bit quantization. So let's see if that's really an error message or it's successful quantization. So it looks like we have completed quantization there. And it looks like we've completed the upload as well of all of these files. So let's take a look. And with that, we have uploaded all of the GGUF files. In fact, a lot of these don't really need to be uploaded, although it's handy to have them there. But you can see here we have a 668 megabyte sized file for the GGUF quantization. If you want to run the GGUF file, you can take a look at the Tiny Llama video. It includes a notebook and a run through of how to run GGUF files on your laptop. If you want access to any of the scripts, the AWQ or GGUF quantization script from today, you can purchase a copy through a link below. It's also included in the advanced fine tuning repo for which you can purchase access and also avail of supervised fine tuning, embedding and dataset preparation scripts. Of course, you can get some scripts for quantization in more raw form on the repos for Lama CPP and also AWQ, and I'll be putting links to those below as well. Let me know any questions overall on quantization in the comments. Cheers, folks.